Hi everyone, this is Dr. Nally. So this is the last uh, series of videos on stoichiometry and in this last video I'm going to be talking about two concepts that are related to each other as well as uh, related to stoichiometry and this is the concept of limiting reactant and uh, yield. So the concept of limiting reactant is actually fairly easy to understand and I'll explain it later on with an analogy to cooking but what we want to first um, understand is just the definition of limiting reactant. It turns out that in most reactions that you're going to encounter, usually one of the reactants um, that you have is present in a smaller amount, uh, number of moles uh, and such, uh, relatively speaking, in comparison to the other reactants that might be required for the reaction. And as a result, the reactant with the smaller amount would limit the amount of product that you can have um, it at the end of the reaction. This reactant is what we call the limiting reactant or in some textbooks uh, they're called limiting reagent and the other reactants which are present in more uh, amounts in comparison to the limiting reactant are often called excess reactants or sometimes also uh, called the reactants in excess. A related concept in stoichiometry uh, to limiting reactant is the concept of yields. And yield is basically just the amount of products that we get. Um, and it, you could kind of define this two ways, and that's the one that I'm going to talk about here. Uh, the amount of product that you expect to get is sometimes not ex exactly the amount of product that you'll get. And this could be because you have experimental uh, constraints with your uh, experiment. There's some issues with your experiment which we'll mention a little bit later. Um, but regardless of whichever one it is, the amount that we either expect to get or the amount that we actually get in the reaction is what we refer to as the yields of the reaction. There are three different related definition for yield. One is theoretical yield and that's uh, exactly what it sounds is the amount of product that we expect to get based on the amount of limiting reactant that is available. So in other words, uh, let me just add the word of product here to uh, correct that definition. So it's the amount of product that you expect to get. Okay, uh, this is the simple definition of the theoretical yield. The actual yield is the amount of product that you actually get, okay, uh, in your uh, experiment. Okay, and these two numbers uh, in theory should be the same but they might not be the same for various reasons and percent yield is then a calculation of how close your actual yield is to the theoretical yield so you take the actual yield and you divide it by the theoretical yield and multiply that by 100 percent of course ideally you want this number to be 100 percent but uh, if it's not that means that there's some issues with your experiment okay uh, usually theoretical and actual yields are expressed in uh, units of mass, but you can also see it expressed as volumes if we're talking about liquids. So let's talk about um, the concept of limiting reactant in yields using an analogy. In this case, I'm going to use a cooking analogy, which is uh, baking pizza in this case. So for example, let's say you have a recipe to make a pizza, and that recipe requires you to mix the following ingredients. One, crust five ounces of tomato sauce and two cups of cheese and in your pantry you find that you have the following ingredients that are related to that pizza four crusts, ten cups of cheese and fifteen ounces of sauce so there's several questions you can ask uh, given this uh, information first off is just how many pizzas can you make or can you expect to make based on these um, uh, numbers of ingredients that you have. Uh, second question is which ingredients limits the number of pizza that you can make. Third is one of your pizzas as it happens as you're baking them uh, it's overbaked and it's burnt in the oven. So how many pizzas do you actually get? Okay and then lastly what's the percent yield of pizzas in the case that you burn one of the pizzas? Okay so we're gonna work on these in, on the next page. Okay, so this is uh, the question that we just had for the pizza making and we have this recipe at the top here 
um, which is really fairly sim you know analogous to our chemical reaction in this case so we have all these reactants here that we need to mix to form our product and we have then these lists of ingredients and what we want to know is how many pizzas can we make in theory if we have all of these ingredients okay hopefully uh, even if you you know are not used to baking you can clearly easily see uh, the following that if you have for uh, crust in your pantry and all the other uh, ingredients are available then in theory you should be able to make so I'm gonna say here in theory I should be able to make four pizzas right because all four crusts can be used assuming the other ingredients are available in excess or there's a lot of them available However, if, uh, if the, I want to use all the sauces, then what you see is that I need 5 ounces of sauce for each pizza. So if I have 15 ounces, that means that it's going to be 15 over 5. So it's going to be 3 pizzas that I can make, right? And then same thing here with the 10 cups of cheese. Each pizza requires 2. That means that if I want to look at uh, how many pizza in theory I can make if I want to use up all my cheese it'll be 10 cups that I have divided by 2 I need for each pizza and that gives me 5 pizza okay now these are uh, in theory what you expect if you were to use up each one of these reactants you're gonna get either 4 pizza if you use up all the crust 3 or 5 uh, depending on which ones it is that you need to use up more okay now the idea here is that okay so hopefully it's pretty clear from uh, this calculation that the species that is the limiting reactant in this case is the sauce okay and you can see that that's the case because if you use up all the sauce you're only going to get three pizzas whereas if you use up all the other reactants you get more pizzas so in other words this is the ingredient or the reactant in this case that uh, produces the least amount of product and so it limits the amount of product so then that's what we define as the limiting reactant so let me just write that here that our limiting reactant is the sauce okay now we had uh, a few other questions earlier that I was uh, asking in the prior slide before we started working on this question and the other one is which ingredient limits the number of pizza and of course that's the sauce how many pizzas can you make now we know because the limiting reactant tells us that at the most we can make three pizzas okay so that's the maximum amount of product we can make if everything goes correctly so in other words that number the number that we expect to make which is three pizzas is everything is used up if the limiting reactant is used up that's what we defined as the theoretical yield okay of the reaction in this case or of, of the baking in this particular case okay now another question that was asked earlier was that as it happens one of your pizzas got burned so then you only got uh, uh, one pizza is burned so then the question is how many pizzas do you actually get well if you in theory is supposed to get three but then one of them is burned of course your what you actually get which is what we call the actual yield in this case is 3 minus 2 which I mean 3 minus 1 the one that doesn't work and so we're left with two pizzas that we actually get okay so that's our actual yield and then lastly we're asked to calculate percent yield right which is just um, pizzas that we actually get two over pizzas that we thought we should get which is three okay actual over theoretical times a hundred percent so we get sixty seven percent yield in this particular process okay I want to point out a, an important uh, calculation that we did uh, earlier in one of the earlier steps to figure out the limiting reactant you notice here that I started by uh, taking the 15 ounces of sauce which is the amount of sauce that I have and I divide that by 5 which is the uh, amount of sauce I'm gonna need to make one pizza right so if you think about it 
what I'm doing there is really just uh, dividing what I have originally with the stoichiometric coefficient in the reaction because 5 as you can see is the stoichiometric coefficient of the sauce component of this reaction and that tells that gives me the number 3 which basically you know is, is the number that's smallest in comparison to the other two numbers if I look at this calculation here where I get 5 pizzas I was doing exactly the same thing I get 10 which is my initial number of reagent and I divide that by 2 which happens to be the stoichiometric coefficient for this cheese component and similarly you don't think about that this this is just 4 right we just say we get 4 pizzas but really what I'm doing here is I take 4 cross and divide it by 1 and so then I'd still get 4 as a result okay so really what I'm doing when I'm trying to figure out the limiting reactant is I take the uh, amount of materials that I have each of the reactant and I divide them by the limiting reactant uh, the stoichiometric coefficient and then whichever one gives me the smallest number that's the one that's my limiting reactant okay so I just want to wrap up this first video on the limiting reactant and yield concept by talking a little bit about how you can determine limiting reactants. So the method that I just mentioned, which is uh, the one where we take the amount of um, uh, ingredients we have at the beginning uh, and then dividing it by the stoichiometric coefficient is uh, described in, in a bit more detail here. So if you think about it, what we did there was we took all the reactants in the case of chemistry you would have to convert all these reactants to their number of moles so you might start with masses but you have to convert them to number of moles you then take that number of moles of for each reactant and you divide each one of them with the appropriate stoichiometric coefficient uh, for that particular reactant and once you do it for all the different reactants then you compare this number and see which reactant gives you the smallest number and the reactant that gives you the smallest number is then our limiting reactant. For method number two, uh, you can also do a calculation where you figure out the number of moles of product that you will get if you were to use up a specific reactant. And you do that for all the reactants that you're given. And at the end, whichever reactant gives you the smallest amount of product, that's the limiting reactant. So either of these methods is reasonable. There's also other methods perhaps that you might have learned. Uh, it's really uh, fine to use as long as it makes sense. Okay. So I'm going to go on to the next video which will discuss uh, how to do stoichiometric cal calculation by putting all the concepts we discuss in this uh, chapter together.